In The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion, we get to explore the land that is Cyrodiil, which is home to the Tamrieli capital of the Imperial City. Such a prestigious location calls for immense social pressure to dress to impress, and as far as RPGs go, especially for its time, Oblivion does not disappoint. In this video, we are going to discuss the Cyrodiilic fashion of the late Third Era and do a general overview of the clothing items that can be encountered throughout the game. We will break it down by the following categories as listed in the unofficial wiki because I think that that is probably the most effective way to put it, so it will go in this order. Outfits, shirts, pants, trousers, slash skirts, pants and trousers, I will explain later on in the video why these are two separate categories, shoes and footwear, hoods and jewelry. I've just decided to put amulets and rings together. Before we get started, my name is Angelica. I really like The Elder Scrolls. Not the games, like the actual scrolls. They're great. When I talk about clothing, no, I'm not talking about the armor. The armor in Oblivion is pretty great, if you ignore the helmets, and it's also a topic that's broad enough to warrant it having its own video talking about it, uh, but this is also a topic that's been extensively covered by the community, and clothing by itself has not. In fact, I think it's quite an underrated topic within the community. So to further clarify it, we're talking about what the citizens, the shopkeepers, the guild members, the beggars, and other questionable individuals wear in the towns and the cities. NPCs and their clothing are actually super important because obviously they are forming a huge part of this fantasy world and not everybody is going to be wearing, you know, the strongest armor in the game. Not everyone's a fighter and that's okay. When I start playing a new RPG, I actually specifically look out for clothing, and I do mean strictly the cosmetic pieces that don't really offer any real armor value. Like I mentioned already, this is a pretty underrated topic, but when you look at it from a developer's perspective, each clothing item has to be individually designed, created, added to the game, possibly redone. I mean, there is a lot of work behind it, so I do think that it deserves, you know, the attention that it deserves. With clothing, you get to see the NPCs live out their normal lives, or as normal as they can be, considering the circumstances. And again, that just helps the player to fully immerse themselves in the world as well. There are a few elements to this, but first of all, I just find that in general, Oblivion's clothing is a lot more detailed and the designs are far more unique than what we've seen in Skyrim. No hate to Skyrim, I absolutely love that game. But just strictly speaking about the clothing, it's just nicer looking, it's just a lot prettier. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that Oblivion has a pretty neat detail in that depending on what gender your player character is, the icon for each item is different. So I know this isn't a thing at all in Skyrim because what you have is just a list of things written out and the physical item on the right hand side, which is all right if you like it. I just prefer the Oblivion version of things. I really like the detail of having the additional art there, especially because they actually didn't have to do it in the sense that, for example, in World of Warcraft, you've got, you know, art for all the different pieces of clothing and armor, but they don't change depending on the gender of the character that's wearing them. In Oblivion, they do. So again, it's just super detailed and I love small things like that. Let's talk about the full outfits in Oblivion first. My favorites in this category are the blue velvet outfit, the black and burgundy outfit, and the red velvet outfit. An interesting thing here, which I'm just now reading in the wiki, is that the clothing that's worn by each NPC is actually assigned to their social class, so this isn't something that you might immediately notice when you're playing the game, but it does make a lot of sense when it's broken down like this here. Um, so, you know, for example, we have common lower class clothing, such as the fishing waders, we have common middle class clothing, such as the russet felt outfit, and of course, common upper class clothing, like the blue velvet outfit. I suppose in Skyrim you did have outfits that suggested the social class of a character, but you know, it's a bit of a gray area when you get down to like the lower slash middle class. I think that there seems to be a bit more of a distinction around this in Oblivion. The full outfits in Oblivion don't disappoint, and they aren't just a recoloration of the same outfit <coughs> Skyrim, uh, but there are totally unique pieces and designs for both male and female uh, characters, and the variety keeps you engaged as you're going through the world because, you know, you're not looking through a sea of NPCs that all look exactly the same. I do think that in a way this is possibly compensating for the fact that they had a very small pool of voice actors working on the game. So, you know, they could at least look different, right? When it comes to Skyrim, they did this thing where there are no pants by themselves, and again, I'm talking about strictly the clothing. Oblivion, however, does have that distinction. So, in Skyrim, all clothing pieces are a top and a bottom piece put together, as far as outfits go. According to the unofficial wiki, the only set of clothing pants that exists in Skyrim are the ragged trousers and 
Quite honestly, that leaves very little room for creativity. <laughs> There's no mixed name matching and you kind of just wear what's already attached to an outfit, which is cool, I guess. Moving on to shirts. Like I mentioned, you have the clothes that come in two pieces in Oblivion. Even though NPCs will mostly wear whatever matches their outfit already, however, you do see some variety, some mixing and matching, and again, that just kind of keeps things interesting. Some of the highlights for me are the dark shirt, as worn by Vincent Valtieri, iconic. The green brocket, doble, I hope that is how you pronounce it and the blacksmith's apron. Going back to the social class that a piece is assigned to, here is actually a very interesting distinction, and they take care to assign the more expensive materials to the upper class, and the cheaper materials to the lower middle classes. So, for example, looking at this particular piece of clothing, you would probably guess that it's assigned to upper class NPCs, but you would be wrong. This item is the burgundy linen shirt, and it is worn by the middle class NPCs in the game. An example of an upper class item would be the blue silk shirt. And then for a lower class piece, you have the green wool shirt. Now when we're talking about pants, trousers, and skirts, uh, I do just want to explain something before we get into the specifics. The reason that there are two separate categories including pants is that the second category does not change the pants into skirts, depending on if a man or a woman is wearing them. This means that some of the women around Cyrodiil are seen wearing pants, which is absolutely blasphemous. Do not let them into the temples of the divines. We must stay focused, my brothers. In this particular category, which includes the skirts, some of the highlights for me personally are the blue silks, the green silk garment, and the red velvet garment. In this category, they're also careful to not specify pants or skirts for an item because they change. However, one very interesting detail that I found was that they did use the word breeches for one of the items, even though it changes into what you would see as a skirt for a woman. Again, however, they also use the same word in the pants only category, but they spell it differently. So in the category including skirts, it's spelled with a double E, B-R-E-E-C-H-E-S, but in the pants only category, it's B-R-I-T-C-H-E-S. I don't know why. I mean, I looked it up and apparently the only difference is that the breeches spelt with the double E is more formal, according to somebody in Quora. I feel that Possibly this was a distinction that the developers needed, you know, when it came to which item changed or didn't change They just needed two separate words for it and that's it But yeah, it's just something curious that I saw in that category now for the pants only category There's only really one thing to note here And that is that none of the items in the category are worn by upper class NPCs other than that the category is pretty insignificant by itself but my favorites in the whole category are the black wide pants which are worn by Vincent Valtieri he is pretty stylish, drip. I guess you could say that it's possibly upper class, but that's not really a distinction that's made in the limit. You don't really know what class he is. He's just like a unique NPC by himself. Now let's talk shoes and footwear. So in Skyrim, most of the footwear that was strictly cosmetic were boots. So there were some shoes here and there, but it was mostly boots. And I guess that for Skyrim's climate, that makes most sense is the most appropriate choice of footwear. There are no boots in Oblivion, other than for armor, but we're not talking about armor. Uh, strictly cosmetic, there are no boots, and it's just shoes, sandals, there's even clogs. No boots. I don't know why, but that just like surprised me a lot. <laughs> Anyways, for my favorites in this category, we have the Emperor's Shoes. The blue suede shoes, don't step on them, effects may be adverse. And the white mage's shoes. They kind of look like something that Drake or Kanye West would flex on their Instagram stories, but yeah, they look pretty cool. Some of the shoes do vary depending on whether a man or a woman is wearing them. Uh, however, the differences aren't too significant, though they do get a separate icon in your inventory. And now moving on to hoods. I think for me this is probably the most disappointing category of clothing in Oblivion. I mean, I liked how in Skyrim you had at least some, not a lot, but some variety in that. You know, you had like the hat, or the chef's hat, uh, the red guard's hood. Um, you also had a whole separate category for circlets, which I think is such a huge miss not having that in Oblivion because, you know, the nobility, particularly the counts and countesses wearing them, that would look great, but... Here we are. The hoods by themselves, they're all right. They're all the exact same model, just different colors of that model. There's absolutely no differences whether a man or a woman is wearing the hood. Uh, it's, it is just a selection of about 12 different colors, and I mean, some of them have a slightly different artwork in the inventory. My favorites are probably the aqua silk hood and the red silk hood. I really just love the bright colors. <laughs> no, but for real, I think one of the reasons that I have like a huge preference 
of Oblivion clothing over Skyrim clothing is like the bright colors that they have. Skyrim in general doesn't have a very bright color palette overall, but in the clothing is something that like you kind of want, and so I love seeing that in Oblivion. Jewelry is an interesting thing to look at in Oblivion because they could have just easily had, you know, different colored bands for each of the rings and leave it at that. It is barely visible, uh, but they didn't. The rings are actually quite nice looking in Oblivion, and you do see them, sort of, if you kind of really look at them. Some have gems, some don't, you know. My favorite ones are like the gold sapphire ring or the ebony emerald ring. Like in Skyrim, you can wear up to two rings, one for each hand, but you can only do that as long as they don't share the same magical enchantment and name. Amulets are also beautiful in the game, and they are mostly visible over, you know, the regular clothing that we were talking about just now, uh, so it does make sense that they are as detailed as they are in the game. I would argue that amulets are the most iconic part of clothing in the whole game, because of, you know, the Amulet of Kings, which, by the way, right here. And in fact, just an interesting thing here, there is another amulet that shares the same model, almost, as the actual Amulet of Kings, except the gem, instead of being red, is like an aqua turquoise color. The main difference here is that the actual Amulet of Kings is surrounded by gems on all sides, uh, whereas the other amulet that I'm talking about only has two gems either side. I am, of course, talking about our Nora's amulet. It's absolutely beautiful, but plot twist. There is actually a third amulet, known as our Nora's true amulet, which, like the Amulet of Kings, has the red gem in the middle, but again, it's not surrounded by gems, it just has the two on the side. I know I'm kind of going off into, like, unique quest item territory here, but I just thought it was super interesting to mention now, now that we're talking about it. Also, because our Nora's false amulet is probably my favorite the rest of the amulets pretty much share the same model, except they're different colors depending on the metal that they're made from. Uh, they also have different gems. One interesting detail that I really like about how the amulets appear in your inventory in the game is that the chain in each of the artworks sort of faces in a different direction, and while there's no real specified reason for this, I imagine it is kind of you know, to simulate how that would appear in your bag, a little bit all over the place. You wouldn't have it all like neatly stored on a stick with the chains facing all the same way. I don't know, that's just how I imagine it. Lastly, here's a category that I haven't mentioned yet, but wrists. So there is only just one item in this whole category, and it is the wrist irons, uh, as worn by the prisoners. This is also what you're wearing as you create your character, you know, you're in the Imperial City prison, so there you go. Now, at this point in the video, you might feel like something is missing, and that's because it is. The Shivering Isles expansion brought an array of brand new clothing items into the game, and I decided not to include them with any of the other clothing previously mentioned, just because it's actually quite different to what the people in Cyrodiil wear, so I didn't feel it was a fair comparison just then. I can imagine that the developers had a lot of fun creating the clothing for the Shivering Isles, because, you know, it is Sheogorath's realm of madness, and there's an opportunity for a lot of creativity here. Again, excluding the armor, which is also so brilliant in the Shivering Isles, in my opinion, uh, I will not hear any criticisms. They added a number of outfits, hoods, shirts, even some jewelry, which looks amazing. The highlights for me are the finery, which comes in red, black, and purple, uh, and specifically, Sil's dress. I mean, that just looks crazy. An interesting thing that I found when looking into the differences between the clothing in the Shivering Isles and in Cyrodiil is that Sheogorath's Realm of Madness seems to be a lot more advanced in the fashion world if we look at it from a real-life perspective. So what I mean by that is, specifically looking at the dresses worn by the ladies, Oblivion's outfits are sort of giving like a medieval vibe, especially with the belts and like the detailed necklines, whereas the Shivering Isles is giving like more Victorian Gothic, which was a style popular in like the 1800s. Huge time gap there. Possibly his realm of madness exists somewhere in the future, and that's just not mentioned at all, but you know, I think it looks great, it's pretty crazy, and I love that there is that difference there. And that is pretty much it for my clothing in the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion video. I mean, like I said before, this has always been one of my favorite elements of the game. It's just not as widely discussed, which is why I thought it would be nice to kind of start that discussion in the community um, and give some love to the clothing items that were created for the game. Please let me know what your favorite items of clothing are in the comments below, or if you just don't care about them and I've just been talking to myself this whole time. That's cool too. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'm very happy to join the community and to meet you all. Thank you so much for all the love on my video about the Oblivion soundtrack. The Skyrim soundtrack, as widely requested in the comments, is coming soon. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next video.